Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today, I am once again modifying a build from another maker. You have seen me do this on the channel a number of times, and my go-to and favorite sculptor out there is Jose Madera, AKA PR Props. He has some amazing sculpts that he then casts and sells online. I'll put links to all his stuff down below. He is from Puerto Rico, has kind of transplanted here in Texas, and I've got to know him over the past couple of years, and it's always been an honor to get to modify some of his stuff and then share that process with you. So today is no exception. One of the biggest issues that I have when purchasing things online in general is I'm a ginormous person. If you've ever tried to do any of my builds using my templates, you know you're probably gonna have to scale it down because I'm huge. I'm six foot three, 265 pounds, I'm very broad, and the biggest problem I have is my head. It is, it's huge. So I knew going into purchasing this helmet that it wasn't gonna fit me, which was perfectly okay. Most of the things sit on a shelf and I just, kind of stare at them from time to time. So I knew that that was gonna be an issue going into it. And I was trying to think of ways to creatively solve the problem of wanting an item, but knowing it's not gonna work for you. So I'm gonna take this cooler helmet from Dragon Ball Z and turn it into a bust. Um, I've been looking at a lot of stuff online and one person in particular that kind of inspires me also is Jack of the Dust. He's another sculptor who does some pretty awesome work. You should definitely go check his stuff out. I'll put links to his stuff down below. But I, I wanted to combine those two things, PR props, Jack of the Dust, make something and then kind of throw my own spin on it, uh, definitely within the paint job. Yeah, so today we are going to modify a PR props build in the style of Jack of the Dust while painting it how I want, you know, that's gonna be rust. Uh, so let's get to building. So I've been a huge fan of PR Props work for the past couple of years. I might have bought almost everything that he's produced. I think this will make like the 11th video I've made using his castings. I actually have like five or six other casts that I still haven't got around to finishing yet. Trying to spread out the goodness, you know. This is the cooler helmet from Dragon Ball Z that he made. Clearly my head does not fit. So my game plan is to cut away a part of his face sculpt a skull and neck, mount him to a wood base, and then give him a rusty paint job. I mark out the section I want to cut out with a sharpie, put on my respirator with face shield, and begin cutting out the portion with a cutting wheel on my rotary tool. I do it for about a minute and then realize I need to take this outside so I don't get buried in an inch of dust. With my cutout done, I need to make a platform on the inside of this void of my skull to rest in. For this, I'm going to use some cardboard. I cut out a strip and hold it midway between the openings so that I can trace a profile of the edge. This will help me to get close to filling the gap around two inches or so in. I eventually realize it'll be easier if I hot glue in small sections instead of trying this whole long piece at one time. Once the sides are on, I take that larger piece of cardboard I have on the left, trim it to the shape, and glue it on the inside to finish my platform. Be careful when using hot glue. While yes, hot is in the name, it can severely burn you if you're not paying attention. That 300 plus degree melted plastic will burn through multiple layers of skin quicker than you can say, oh crap.
My neck will start out as a simple tube of cardboard that I'll sculpt over in a minute. All of this is just a base for my next material, which will be closer to the finish of the resin casting. Once I have the tube glued into place, I cut a chunk of foam, add a piece of two inch PVC to it, and then glue that into the helmet. Once all of that is together, I can cap off the bottom of the neck with some more cardboard. I didn't film making the wooden block here, but it's just two chunky pieces pieces of wood glued together with a hole drilled in to accept the PVC. The beefy wood block is heavy enough to easily support the casting on top of it so it's pretty sturdy. Now that all the base structures are in place, it's time to bulk it out closer to its final shape. For this, I'm going to use foil. It's easy to shape and manipulate into place, and once I am happy with how it looks, I just hot glue it onto the surfaces. I do this to make the skull and the muscles for the neck. Using the foil as a filler on my sculpt will allow me to use less of the sculpting material, which isn't really cheap. With my foil in place, I pull up a skull reference in an image search and get ready to sculpt. I'm going to use some Freeform Air by Smooth On. No, they're not a sponsor, but I'd love it if they were. This is a two-part epoxy putty that is super light. It is equal parts A and B by volume, with one being a white and the other being a dark gray color, so when you combine them, they're light gray. When mixed together, you have a couple of hours of handling time, and it sets up fully in about 20 24 hours. It can be a little tricky to work with because it sticks to everything. You can use isopropyl alcohol or water to smooth it over. I found that spraying mold release onto my glove
gloves helps it to prevent from sticking to me at least a little bit for a little while. I push it onto the foil and then with my hands and various sculpting tools I shape the skull, the neck muscles, and the bottom of the neck. It does stiffen up after a few hours so you can come back after a little while to refine your shapes so it's not as soft as it is initially. Instead of trying to sculpt the teeth, I have some pre-made resin ones I bought online. I think they're meant to make dentures with. You can buy a set of four on Amazon for like under $15. I've let the freeform sit for about an hour or two and I am ready to shove these teeth into the holes before they cure. I start with the bottom row and work my way across then repeat the same process for the top. I didn't glue them in so fingers crossed they'll hold where they're supposed to be. I think the epoxy plus the paint plus the gold leaf should be enough to keep them in position. After a light sanding, I cover the head, the PVC, and the wood base in some black spray paint for a unifying base coat. Then the head gets a lighter misting of silver, brown, and black to give it an aged metal look. For the cooler helmet part, I am going to add a painting treatment to it. You can do this a number of different ways, but I like using the Modern Masters Rust Metal Effect. Not a sponsor, but I'd really like it if they were. It's a three-step process that adds a base color layer of orangish brown primer, a layer of paint with iron flex in it, and then a rusting solution spray. I've used it a number of times and I'm always happy with the results. It puts real rust on the finished piece, so I start the the process by putting down the primer. After letting the primer dry for a couple of hours, now I move on to the iron layer. I dab both layers on with a chip brush, not really being too delicate or precise with it at all. The overlapping and irregularities in my layers will add to the variations that I see when I spray it later. Slap on the iron layer and wait a couple of hours for the next step or speed the process up with a hairdryer or a heat gun. Or if you live in Texas, just pop it outside for a couple of minutes.
now it is time for the rust solution spray aka the magic cover all the painted areas with the spray i usually make an initial pass and then come back an hour later and wet it down again to get better variations as the spray dries on your piece a chemical reaction will take place speeding up the process of aging of the flecks of metal in the iron paint i love the variations that this treatment gives which is why it's always a go-to if i have it on hand for some rust effects they also make a bronze and a copper patina version of this paint system Now I'm masking off the area I want to put the gold leaf. I'm trying to use the tape to help prevent it from bonding to any areas that may still be wet. Gilding is pretty simple. You lay down a layer of gilding paste and then let it sit for a couple minutes to then go over the top of it with your sheets of metal. I love the finish sheen you get from gold leaf but absolutely hate the glitter explosion that will take place when I knock off the excess in a few minutes. So I'm trying to be as gently as I can laying down the metal sheets to show you how on camera and then I'm going to take it outside and try and knock off the excess so I don't devastate my workspace. Ultimately it was useless as I just tracked a majority of it back inside. Look in the outro and see if you can spot my glitter shame in my beard and my hair. Once done I painted the edge between the rust and the gilding with acrylic paint. To make all the details stand out just a little bit more, I'm going to add some black washes into the crevices. I watered down some black acrylic paint and hit all the recesses. It goes on pretty dark, but the rust does a good job of absorbing most of it, so it's going to dry a lot lighter. It makes it subtle. I make a couple of passes in key areas, and I'm getting pretty close to calling this build done. One last bit of detail I wanted to add to my rust effect was to make some areas a little more textured and yellowish in key spots. Primarily I'm hitting in the crevices where the water would technically pull and settle causing more rust. For this I'm using a little Mod Podge as my adhesive and curry powder as the yellow bits of rust. Any rust colored seasoning will work from red to yellow. Lay down the glue then sprinkle on the spice. It'll give it a a nice chalky dust texture that real rust has and will make it smell great too. Now instead of iron, spray paint, and epoxy, it smells like a nice curry. Once it is done, I glue it to the wood base, put a couple of rubber feet on the corners of the base bottom, and then call this build done. And we are finished. Here is the end result 
Overall, I love the way this turned out. It was definitely a labor of love. This thing is super heavy. I know that rust isn't necessarily everybody's cup of tea and they don't necessarily like the way it looks, but to me, it's a natural process of breaking down of metal. And I love the variations that you get, especially with the chemicals that I use to do this process with. Um, and then the juxtaposing of the gold with it, kind of having that nice contrast. Gold leaf, I forget every time how much I hate the glitter results afterwards that um, plague the, the shop for, for months to come. But I just love the way that it turns out. You can't really get that sheen with other paints unless you go super expensive. But yeah, maybe you will try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to pull something that's too small for you into a situation where you can stare at it as inspiration for years to come. Yeah. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them much props. Um, I'm just going to go stare at this for a while, so peace out. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to continue to see builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.